this might sound like racist, but we tell everyone that we don't accept pigeons. <laughs> Naturalist is that is that the correct term? So there's two words: naturalist and naturist. Naturist, naturist is something very different. <laughs> Which is a what? Nudist. If they're a naturist club, uh, <laughs> that, that's not me. <laughs> I'm too optimistic. People said, "Um, look, Sue, you can say that." It's because the world is beautiful. If we love something so much, you care for them so much, you can't escape this pain. Okay, that's called the solastalgia. If I'm be somebody who who's you know who can prime minister, I would climbing trees is a national agenda <laughs> for children. Everybody needs, <laughs> needs to do they it. Needs the country. Go climb your trees. Yeah, right, you will become a better person. I think. <laughs>
um, common um, illness that we had in these these days are the obstruction of these arteries, ah. and they have like chest pain and mm. have heart attack. Mm. The people mostly uh, because of our diet, right? Exactly. Well, t h e r e our lifestyle, I would say. Okay. Diets, lack of exercise, a lot ah. of stress. You know, uh-huh. it's actually, guilty in all charges. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, we had to go back like 400,000 years ago okay. to understand what's what's happening because. That was when Homo sapien arise in in this world, and our lifestyle then mm-hmm. is very different from what what, it, what we we are doing at the moment. Right. Um, you know, after the ag- agricultural revolution and obviously after the industrial revolution, the lifestyle changed like you know d- dramatically. Our body, you know, our anatomy, physiology are not suited at all. It's not designed or evolved. For this kind of lifestyle at all? No, no. We don't. Before we can, you know, we can get some food to hunt mammoths. We have to go <laughs> over the hills or yeah. find some fruits, you know, to, to eat. But right. right now, it's just like in the supermarket. You can yeah. just pick everything. Well, uh, you can and have them delivered all the time. Right? Yeah, you just pick up in your phone. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, deliver uh-huh. it. Thanh nom khai muk ma lao. Exactly. So <laughs> the calorie is flooded again, mm. and um, you know, sugar is becomes so cheap, and it's you know, your your body is not. Prepare for all this, you yeah. know. When 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 you have um, sugar in your blood, there is a, a um, organ called the pancreas. They mm. had they had to produce uh, insulin to keep the the glucose down. But they've been you know working too hard. I mean you know, and mm. they become exhausted. That's why you get diabetes, right? And um, you know, eating a lot of salt, you get a lot of stress by by this kind of you know yeah. work environment. So you got hypertension and uh-huh. and eventually those things and cholesterol of course cholesterol high cholesterol mm-hmm. from diet. Yeah. Eventually this makes your artery become clogged, and um, you had heart attack in the end. Yeah. So it's it's a maladaptive um, kind of a disease that our body is not prepared for this kind mm. of. They um, can't evolve fast enough. No, it's, this is overnight change for us. Right. Look, yeah. Uh-huh. And. Um, So if you ask me what how we o u l d prevent it, is mean that you know, we have to change our lifestyle. There is no quick, you know, you no quick buy, fix. No quick fix, fix. You can't go buy certain medication or mm. or it's it's. We not. I'm not. To, I'm not meaning that you have to go back to being a caveman. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you have to live a more moderate life. Okay? Right. And then be aware that, you know, a lot of. Commercial will drive you to well, um, you know, you when you see hamburgers uh, or ice cream or, or sweets things, like, it's actually in your gene that drives you to crave of these things because in the ice age, there is famines everywhere, mm. right? And and those who survive are, are those who you know have crave with you know high calorie or fats. Mm. Those so those people are selected by their gene, and we are their descendants. But that's <laughs> for survival. <laughs> that's right? for survival. Yeah. But the, now the environment, the situation is not like that anymore, no. right? No. So yeah. right then, so uh-huh. it's um, yeah, we have to be aware of all this that our body reacts mm. that way, mm. and um, yeah, we we have to be moderate uh, mm. about in our living lifestyle and all that. Yeah. And um, being in, in an environment that is So detached from nature can cause a lot of stress and depression, and and a lot of people don't realize that. And this, mm. that's why you know the depression is um, the the medication for depression is the biggest market now for the teenage now, because um, we had um, you know a lot of teenagers, um, and a lot of people having depression and anxiety in the society because of the, and they are so uh, disconnect to. Um, mm. To the to nature, which they, they probably don't know what's the cost, but why why there's so much stress? But yeah. uh, nature actually heals all these things. Uh-huh. Uh, I can talk about that later. Yeah, 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 now I can see the the relation between mm-hmm. your two titles, your right. slash right, cardiologist and also conservationist. So mm-hmm. what do you conserve? Nature, basically, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When we talk about conservationists, they con they conserve. Nature, so make sure the nature stays mm-hmm. in good condition and not become polluted mm-hmm. or destroyed or mm-hmm. ruined by mm-hmm. by humankind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what got you into this like nature business in the first place? Well, actually, it started when I was very young because my my mother, she's um, 
um, she's opened the door uh, for me to walk in this, to this natural world. Actually, I'm a, <sighs> I would say I'm the last generation, perhaps. I, I, when I was young, I lived by Sukhumvit Road um, near Emporium. Yeah. And you wouldn't imagine behind my, my house, there's a rice field. <laughs> and oh, <laughs> over there. Yeah. And it, it, I, used, and it lo- used to have a lot of green space. Yeah, and lotus pond, things yeah. like that. Ah. In the middle of Sukhumvit Road, you wouldn't imagine that. But I was the last generation who... Uh, who would grow up with all those green space. And mm-hmm. so it, uh, we, we used to, um, you know, and we don't have so much, um, you know, iPad or, um, you know, all those gadgets. Well, we, we get bored, right? Right. So being bored is very important. So that, <laughs> I think it's bored is, uh, boring. Uh, boredom is very good is that in a way because it drives, um, you know, you have to use your imagination. True. To, right? To yeah. play with and structure, yeah. uh, play. Uh-huh. You know, we need to be entertained. Right, as, as somehow. Human. Yeah. So we, we go to the pond and we look for tadpoles, right? Yeah. Uh, we climb the trees. We, mm-hmm. So um, those generations who still spend a lot of time outdoors, mm-hmm. yeah. um, these days, a lot of, um, you know, some when they, they ask, why don't you play outdoors? They say, oh, there's no electrical plugs to put in. So <laughs> <laughs> the wife yeah. might run out of uh-huh. power. So... Um, uh, they, and they, it's too hot, and there's traffic. Too hot. And like they might get PM dark. You know, they're afraid of sun and yeah. and snakes maybe <laughs> lurking around. So right. it's, it's nature phobia now, mm, right? Mm. Anyway, my mother was um, she was really encouraged us to play in the nature, oh. and she introduced me to a lot of things in nature. We I, I usually go to walk with her in the forest, and um, the, she actually um, was born in England, so um, she doesn't know much about. The exact, you know, Thai animals and plant, but she have very good knowledge of, of biology right. uh, or life, um, oh. uh, and um, you know, she usually walk and by and although she didn't name the uh, this tree, this bird, she would talk to them and she was hello, I've seen you before, <laughs> oh, you 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 stranger to me, you're so cute and all that, wow. and I, at first I was thought, oh, my mother, she's kind of um, <laughs> it's crazy or not, but it really. Um, those kind of experience really makes me. I, I look at you know natural world as not as we as as a center of everything, center of universe. Everything is you know as a resources for a human. Yeah. No, I have the other perspective. Mm. We're not on the top of pyramids. We mm. are just one of them. We are. Mm. It's it's them. You know. We I I have respect for things large as uh. well or small as. And they have right to live in this world. They're friends to us. Right. This is what I, um, what I, my, my perspective since I was a child. My it was mother. amazing. It runs in the family. It no does. wonder. It so does, yeah. what, what your mother did for you was, was it's amazing. amazing. I know. It's, yeah. it's the best. She opens a wonderful door for you to, to nature world. It's the best thing she could give, um, one wow. you can give to the For me, I think that's, that's the best thing. <laughs> right. So um, you, I, I used to, uh, I think I read it from somewhere or heard from somewhere that actually you define yourself as conservationist first and then part-time cardiologist. <laughs> so right. that, that's, um, that's how much you put an importance on this nature thing. Yeah, I work as a civil servant, okay, so, um, uh, uh, so Monday um, to Friday, um, 8 to 5, I, I, mm. I, I, I'm a cut job. Uh, yeah. yeah, but um, if you have to, if you ask me what I consider more important, mm. because curing people is important, um, um, relieve them from suffering is important, but you're not really, uh, you know, the, the, the main problem of this world uh-huh. is much larger. I see. So, um, it was a time when I was I was the, when I graduated in 1990, and then I was a doctor for a few years, and I see a lot of my patients suffering. They actually um, they stem uh, roots from a lot of um, you know the lifestyle that is causing by um, environment changes. And I you know like when you know I, I was I was working in Dansai in Loe Province and. And those people, they um, they slash and burns, and they, uh, you know, they their crops are cash crop. They have to, and when the some year the price goes up, they they're fine. But some sometimes the price go down, they become broke and become depressed, and you know they oh, 
all, all their illnesses, they come to see me. I, you mm. know, they, they're related to all this. And I thought, mm. what am I doing? What, you know, I'm treating this day by day. I didn't do any, change anything much. So I, so I quit being a medical doctor at that time. Mm. I said, okay, although I love being a doctor so much, um, but I would rather, um, you know, do something more worthwhile. Mm. So I, I become a conservationist um, mm. to, to try to, um, you know, to change and yeah. attitude. But um, both, both world, um, both jobs are about caring for life. Okay? Right. Um, being doctor is individual life. Mm. But as a conservationist, you're caring for a much broader mm. uh, you know, perspective of life yeah. beyond human yeah. and you know, for the whole ecosystem. Right. In a way, you kind of mm. go to the root of the problem. Yeah, and then I, maybe I was you thinking can, like that. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, and maybe you get to cure less and less people right. because if the nature is good, yep. yeah. But once I decided that I become a conservationist full time, mm-hmm. I found that I, I miss my medical career so much. Although I love it, um, I know that I, I love it, but I didn't know I miss it so much because mm-hmm. being a conservationist, you you know what you do, you can't really see the fruits of it. Uh, right away, you know, it's I see. It's like a um, lifetime uh, thing, uh-huh. right? To yeah. change people' attitudes, to think, and a lot of bad news coming every day. You need what kind of heart do you, you know? Yeah, you yeah. have to 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 endure all mm. this. You know, it's a very long game, and yet you have to be very optimistic. Yeah, but being a doctor, you see your reward right away. Mm. I'm not talking about money, but you know, you see that you're. Your patients relieved, you know, they're cured, they can go back home to the lo- their loved, loved ones. It's the instant reward. So I think I'm addicted to that. I'm addicted to being you know, useful, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So I, I thought that maybe I have to do both. I have okay. to do both. That's why I came back um, to be right. a cardiologist um, again. And how, how do you do both? I mean... Poorly. It, it must, P- poorly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe that. Because they... Both of the yeah. jobs, uh-huh. it has to be super time-consuming, it does, right? Yeah. Being a doctor, mm. like full-time doctor, and then you also consider yourself a full-time mm. a conservationist. Mm. By the way, what does a full-time conservationist do mm. on on the daily basis? Oh, well, that depends on what what um, you concentrate on. But um, I'm <laughs> concentrate on the environmental education uh. because um, I consider myself not as an activist so much. I'm not a that's not really me. I'm okay. not the one who go out and, you know... Yeah, protest. Uh, and, protest, yeah. even though I, I do that sometimes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not real my true nature. I see. Um, but you need to do that when it's critical, right? Mm. But that's not, um, that's not sustainable. Mm. I think we I still believe that we need to change the attitude. We need to, uh, you know, people need to understand, mm. uh, right? Because um, in, in the end, you will only conserve what you love, and you will only love what you understand, and you will only understand what you've been taught. So, uh, I don't want to use the word educate. It sounds a bit, mm. you know, but you it's know, like to, like create awareness, get awareness, the information yeah, out there yeah, to yeah. people. And I'm um, more comfortable with childrens, mm. and I so that I I, I work a lot with children. So yeah. I do, I you take, do camps. I do camps. I take them for bird watchings or nature Ooh. walks. And yeah, yeah. Same things that my mother did to me. Ah. Oh. Right? So I, I think I want to instill, um, you know, I, I put, you know, saw a seat of, mm. of nature, love of nature in there. When, although they're going to be like engineers, politicians, mm. or even farmers, anything. Mm. But if they have this respect right. of nature, be, they become humble, um, mm. they become kind. Mm. I think being humble and kind and respectful is mm. very important. And I yeah. think that is like vaccination that I want to give. Mm-hmm. As being a doctor, I like to give vaccine. And so I think this vaccination is important for them. They need to have immunity mm. um, to protect them from you know, all these lot of things that are happening in the world. Yeah. So if they are kind, they're respectful, and they're humble, I think um, you know, we, we will have a chance for a better future, for, mm-hmm. to live harmony with nature. Yeah. So, uh, by uh, using birds as a, as an ambassador, because oh. um, bird watching is a very fun activity. Uh-huh. Uh, although all the animals are important, mm. yeah. Um, there are some like millipedes and centipedes that yeah. people would yeah, you know, worm. Right. But 
they are important mm-hmm. ecologically. They are important for right. our nature's our ecosystem, but mm-hmm. they're not very attractive. So I can't <laughs> have this, uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, gecko club or lizard club. <laughs> I don't think I'd get any member. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so bird is. Beautiful. They sing. Their song are amazing, and yeah, they, they they have amazing uh, colors. Oh, they variable, uh, right. ra- varied, um, you know, plumage uh-huh. and all. So we use bird as a as an ambassador yeah. of nature, and they, you know, they will, you know, after you interest with birds and you uh-huh. want to know, oh, what trees are they perching on, and uh, uh-huh. what do they eat, they understand a bigger picture, and they uh-huh. connect all this little jigsaw, and they see the whole I picture. See. See? So when you, when you take all these kids out into the mm. forest, do you talk to plants and birds also, like the way your mother used to do? I do. Yes, I do. Wow, I amazing! Mean, yeah. yeah, talk to plants and talk to birds and things <laughs> like that. Exactly. <laughs> well, researching on 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 you before today, the, where we have mm-hmm. this conversation, mm-hmm. I get to learn a lot of interesting words. Mm-hmm. So one of them. Being, you mentioned birds, so ornithologists, right? Ornithologists. Ornithology or ornithologists <laughs> who are in on. Nong on, nan ben kon ti son jai reng no. That's how I remember my vocabulary. So ornithologist, mm, someone um, who studies birds, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Do you consider yourself one? Not quite. Um, ornithologists are professional uh, people who do research on birds. Mm. So. I I do have some papers or um, uh, uh, research on bird, but very very few. Okay. There had to be a dedicated profession. I see. So um, you know, I'm like amateur one. I would. Uh-huh. Um, there are words called the uh, bird watchers. Right. Birders. Right. Uh, and, hold on. Uh, birders. 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 Wow, cool. Cool. Just yeah. bird and bird. er. Yeah. Birders. birders. People Someone who, who loves the birds. birds. Yeah. Okay. But but uh, the, there are also words called bird watchers, right? People who watch birds, and right. and there are quite there is small difference between these two. Mm-hmm. A bird watchers would be, sorry, might be a little bit a stereotype, but you know, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a, a old woman sitting in an armchair <laughs> and watch the bird in their garden. They feed, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. feed birds and they Yeah, but with binoculars and you know, maybe like with or without. Yeah, but yeah. but they, you know, they are more casual about, uh, uh, you know, they love watching birds around them and, uh, you know, okay. these are bird watchers. Yeah. But birders, they're more serious. They will you know, pursue, uh, you know, like like today, I was thinking of the one bird um, called the brown-breasted flycatcher, which doesn't mean anything to <laughs> the audience. <laughs> yeah. they, they just pop up in uh, Swan Red Fai uh-huh. and I thought maybe I could, <laughs> find time to find and see that bird. Yeah, it's called twitching. This is an- another word. Uh, twitching. 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 You know, twitch, twitch, right. twitch. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, twitchings mean that um, people who love birds so much, when their uh, rare bird pops up somewhere, uh-huh. they can't they stay still. Yeah, they can't stay still. <laughs> they wow. have to go twitching. Right. Uh-huh. So Very graphic. I, I have that urge to go to see this bird. Wow. And this kind of behavior you call these are birders who mm-hmm. are so serious of. Sing as many birds as they can, right? Ah, <laughs> in the world. Yeah. Uh, and I know. see them sometimes like draw pictures of they the do, rare yeah. birds. I do that a lot. In their notebooks and yeah, stuff. I do that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Wow. Take, it's amazing. Take photographs or draws yeah. or like that. Yeah. You, I, I like how you mentioned before that you um, take birds. Uh, and like have them as your ambassador, uh-huh. just to reel people into this world, right? right? So, and what other significance do birds have? I mean, ecologically, like oh. to the environment, like okay, compares to like bees, right? Right, right now, people know how mm. bees, how much bees are very important do, to yes. the world. We yeah. cannot live without the world without yeah. bee, right? Exactly. Birds uh-huh. are they the same? Like they are more. <laughs> okay, they are more. Actually, like well, it talks about a little bit about bees. Um, you know, if you vibe up bees today, tomorrow at the supermarket, not tomorrow, a few days later in the supermarket, two third of the food would be disappeared, because those are pollinated by bee, right? So we are dependent on the service of these insects, uh-huh. and um, you know we have this problem with crash of pop- uh, insect population. Mm. I don't know whether you are old enough, but when oh, I uh, am. I'm you sure. Are, right. Then, <laughs> but when you were young, perhaps when you drive car outside Bangkok, mm. 
uh, at night, you come back, your windscreen of will, will be dirty, full of little insects, right? Yeah. Do, do you remember yeah. that? Or you, yes. You do. I do, yeah. But right now, that's not the case, right? Yeah. It's clean. Yeah. Your windscreen is It's clean. It's been a while that I, you know, hear, hear about like, wind, uh, like windscreen full of insects. But now you have this phenomenon of clean windscreen. Okay. Do you notice that happening? And what does that tell us? The population of insect has crashed. 90% of the insect has gone, has, has disappeared. That's why when you drive at night, you don't get all these insects at all. Mm. A lot of people will say, good, so we get rid of these mosquitoes and right. flies and all that. Uh-huh. Oh, it's a good no thing. No car wash the next day. But you, the insects are actually very important for ecosystem. Mm. As you mentioned, bees for pollinations. And, right. and um, they, are, they are certain very important for the food chains and mm. all that. So it's, we are in real trouble. Yeah. We, 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 um, yeah but this is another thing we have to Yo, come back to your questions about what um, birds are important. Um, if you look at the uh, ecosystem, like our society, We had a lot of you know people with different profession and occupation, right? You are um, you know reporters or uh, um, people like me. I'm a doctor, but we can't have doctors everywhere. You know we need mecha, uh, some tam people, mm. <laughs> vendors. Sure, we need yeah. uh, um, you know police. I don't know whether we need police, but um, <laughs> we need we need <laughs> you know we need different occupations sure, for yeah. um, for the society As to society, work. As society, yes. So. Um, there is a word, um, technical word, it's called niche, N-I-C-H-E, niche, right? A role to play in the ecosystem. Mm. It's the same thing as occupation. Mm. Okay, and what do bird niche are? Mm. They are, um, they are. Um, first of all, they, uh, some of them hunt, right? They're like the eagles and um, that we call raptors, right? Mm. Hawks and eagles, mm. they hunt. Some of them are scavengers. Um, they, where you have Dead animals, crow vultures. Uh-huh. They can. Be, if you don't, if, if nobody get rid of these, uh, you know, dead animals, disease might spread out. Okay, uh-huh. and there are um, birds that pollinate um, um, flowers. You would think insect would do. No, um, some flowers depends on bird to do that. Uh-huh. And most importantly, there are the seed dispersal. They because trees don't have legs. They 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 want to spread out. They can't. They need somebody to to bring them away. And what's the best is to uh, to, to have a air, air air transport, right? So they they use a lot of birds to eat their fruits and mm. then carry this. Um, their relationships have been, you know, evolved together for millennia. Um, so um, mm. these are just an exa- example that what is working behind us. Mm-hmm. This is a life support system that we are sitting on, and we mm-hmm. we take them for granted. Mm-hmm. And um, it's our it's our own um, pearls that we we you know we if we ignore their importance, mm-hmm. you know we we are in trouble in, yeah. in real trouble. And and when you talk about like birds, there mm-hmm. are like several like millions, million kinds of birds, right? Not, so. Not that many. Not, oh, that, not many. that many. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, there are about ten thousand species. Ten thousand. Okay. All well, around that's, the world. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All, all around the world. Yeah. So, do we need to save like all of them? I mean, uh, are all of them in danger right now, or not all of them in danger? Some okay. have been very still very common, like um, you know pigeons. <laughs> yeah, here. pigeons. <laughs> okay. Do we need to save pigeons? Ah, right. Uh, Because they're troublemaker, right? They People do. hate they, them. They are. They are. Yeah. Yeah. The pigeons are um, become a trouble because we change the environment uh, a lot, right? It's not their fault. It's Is it fair not to their say that? Fault. Well, they 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 take the advantage of the environment change that people bring along because mm. pigeons actually nature what they do they live in cliff. In stony cliff, right? Okay. And what we do, we create so much, so many stony cliff like buildings, <sighs> concrete buildings, right? Uh-huh. And there are so such a tolerant birds; they can tolerate um, pollution so well. And they are opportunistic. They are generalist. They don't. They're not fussy. They can eat anything. They can stay anywhere. Right. So, so they, um, you know, they. They're they, like cockroaches. Of birds. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right? That's yeah. that's a good uh, you know uh, comparison. Yeah. 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 Analogy, yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm not a fan of uh, of pigeons. Um, and yeah. um, I run a um, bird hospital rehabilitation mm. center in mm. Chiang Mai. Mm. When people had injured bird, we care for them. 
and we try to release them back to nature mm. to for them to be you know useful. Mm. It's not to keep them in cage. Mm. Birds have to be you know working mm. or, or you know their mm. you know their 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 ability you mm. know their, their, their surface their surface like, like exactly. you said before yeah exactly. I like surface. it. So um, uh, we we try to release them right, mm. but we tell everyone that we don't accept. Pigeons. <laughs> this might sound like racist, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you dis discriminate. But we found that um, because pigeons are unbalanced now, right. and it carries overpopulated, overpopulated. It's uh -huh. um, it's um, it brings disease and all that. So yeah. we, we 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 don't mind them. There are going to be few pigeons. We don't mind yeah. that. <laughs> I heard this, I heard the same thing about some fish too. Like if oh, there yeah. are too many. Fish of this kind in the exactly. river, so the the Ex in ecology it, gets like yep. messed up. Exactly, you you're right. Yeah, it's it's um you know you, you tip the balance everything. Right. Blah kang dam. You've heard that mm. that some of the big uh, agricultural companies yeah. they bring them in and mm. release them out, and then it causes havoc to to the mm. whole system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, what do you teach uh, people or kids about birds? Well, I teach them um, you know, to be able to identify what birds that they're, they're, they're looking. At. I would say the birds that maybe not rare, but you know, just around them, they should be aware of these birds around them. Mm. Sometimes they know more very well about the um, Korean idol, uh, very good. <laughs> um, you know, although they live very far away, but they don't know the birds around them that sings you know, like in the morning, right. like mm. um, like Oriental Magpie Robin, Nok Gang Khen Ban. It sings so beautifully in the morning, mm. but. But people yeah. don't, you know, they ignore them, right? You don't know what so they I, are, yeah. I just want them to get to know all these you know, um, household bird, if you like, mm. and um, be able to appreciate them. Okay, um, not just you know knowing the name. I think knowing the name is the first step, but mm. but to appreciate them, yeah. see their beauties, and um, to know why it's useful, mm. what what is doing. Um, you know, to to us, uh, to yeah, yeah. to the whole system. Uh -huh. yeah. So, besides identifying them or watch them in nature, what else? Um, to, to be connected to them, I would okay. say. Yeah, be, yeah. Uh, the, the key word would be connected. I, see. I want them to be connected to uh, you know, birds and mm. environment mm -hmm. because these days, um, this the the new generation they had a lot of you know. Uh, new um, you know opportunity, but also they they lost lost quite some some others. Mm. You are these days they are flooded or submerged in digital world, right? Mm. But the real world experience they lack of them. Yeah, and I, I think if you ask why, how um, some of the kids sometimes where's um, you know entire normai the bamboo shoots come from mm. they can't name this they come from bamboo they can't tell holy basil from sweet basil yeah. right things well, like that I can't either <laughs> you can't I'm either. not sure if I can maybe <laughs> right. I can but right yeah although um, you know just for for example so I think these are these symptoms of uh, so called the disease called nature deficit disorder. The, the, no fancy word, right? Nature, yeah. <laughs> nature deficit <laughs> disorder. Right? Yeah, it's it's actually the words that coined by um, um, uh, American writers who mm. wrote a book named um, "The Last Child in the Woods," and um, I'm the last um, generation. I, I hopefully not, but it seems mm. like that because yeah. the new generation are disconnected to the natural world. So mm. much that they they know about it. They see them in television, mm. the, but it's not the it's the virtual experience. It's not the real experience. It's quite a different thing. Right. So it's for me. I think if you never if a child never climb a trees, they never look at their tadpoles uh, in the ponds behind. Yeah. It's very difficult for them to really care for these kind of things. That they, these are won't be their friends, right? Mm. And um, how would um, you know, I would be worried that you're gonna? How would this generation, um, you know, uh, when they grow up, um, in th th um, and then how who would care for this world if they're mm -hmm. never connected to mm -hmm. to to the, um, mm -hmm. yeah, to the world? Yeah. So I think that um, very important that we we mm -hmm. we have easy accessible place where people can spend time, mm -hmm. like you know, in you know, parks in the cities. Yeah. And nobody, you can't. Expect people to go into the forest and watching animals. That you know, any green area, okay, yeah, bring in close to home. Right. Um, a good cities, you know, you should have green space for yeah. people to to be connected to mm -hmm. nature.
Yeah. It's funny you mentioned climbing trees because mm -hmm. just the other day, I think like two weeks ago, uh, we had this workshop mm -hmm. where we get to draw something on a piece of paper and mm -hmm. talk about them, right? So um, the prompt was draw your most memorable memories. Mm -hmm. And I, what I drew on the piece of paper is me climbing a tree. Wow. Yeah. Because, yeah, that, I think that was one of my most precious mm -hmm. experiences. I'm, I'm not even sure that I get to climb any tree at all after that tree in the, back of, uh, in the backyard of my old house. Mm -hmm. So people, like kids, don't get to climb trees anymore. And it was a wonderful experience. It does. It right? Does. You, friends, uh, trees become your friend, right? And it's, you also have a risk management thing, right? You have yeah. to risk of falling, and, but you know sure. how to... And, and I have my favorite trees too. You like, do, right? Yeah, this is my best friend. And not so much this one because it's exactly. too hard to climb. And <laughs> right. Yeah, but this, oh, I can climb very you're, easily. You're and connected to it, right? Yeah, you're connected, connected to it. To it. Yeah. At, at least, I think, yeah. And that, that's very important. Uh, if I'm... I don't know if I'm be somebody who who's you know who can uh, you know the prime minister. I would climbing trees is a national agenda <laughs> for children. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> needs to do they it. They need the country. Go climb your trees. Yeah, right then. They, yeah. they must have their fabric trees like like you do. Mm -hmm. You will become a better person. I think. <laughs> in in a broader uh, picture or broader terms, I think you're not just like a conservationist, but like a na um, na naturalist. Uh -huh. Is that a good? Is that, is that a correct term? That's a, it's a correct term. Don't okay. don't misspell. It. Not a na, not a naturalist, right? That's like, two. Or different. like na nature and ist. Naturalist. Naturalist. Naturalist is something very different. <laughs> Which is a what? Nudist. <laughs> Which is a nudist. So people who likes to be in nature right, right without there. any clothes on. So there's two words: naturalist and naturist. naturist. So if there are naturist club. Uh, that, <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> um, uh, naturalist club, yes. Take by Didi, what he need to do now? Right. Wait, naturalist, the no by Niku. You have to get naked. You have to but get naked. In order to be a naturalist, you don't have to get naked, right? Yeah. You just go and Open, appreciate nature. Appreciate. Open up your senses, and this is very important. Mm. Your senses, because when you live so long in a city, mm. you are you you are bombarded. Your sense are bombarded with. You know, light of lights and sounds and everything. So it naturally is your even in the middle of the night, right? Like exactly. Lights. So you you have to, how you get along with that? You have to your sense have to be more like coarse. Maybe you you shut off a lot of sense to be able to to live there, right? But you know, so that's when it um, when that happens for a long time, your sense become less acute. You can't hear, you know, um, the sounds of. Um, you know, a flapping of uh, wings of the birds, or uh, you know, some bees heart be, uh, buzzing, or, mm -hmm. uh, or a rustling of the leaves. Mm -hmm. Those kind of sounds you wouldn't hear anymore, right? Yeah. Or the stream cicadas. Cica well, cicadas is very loud. Oh, <laughs> super <laughs> rare, but loud. <laughs> loud yeah. Well, it, yeah, it, it kind of a sound of like the past and yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, in yeah. your memory it's, too. But right. yeah. or water. Uh, in the stream, trickling, you know, uh, uh, rushing along the the rocks, yeah. which I call that sounds a breathing sound of stream, a breathing sound of stream. Because when the water hits the rocks, it creates bubbles, mm. and it that's when the oxygen, um, you know, gets in the streams, and that's oh. why fish can live and all that. It's a breathing sound of stream. Wow. When you sit by the streams and you hear the sound, so I think these senses, okay, all the five or maybe more senses than that, it's. You you would it would be, uh, um, you'd be you know very sad if you lose them. Mm. So um, I think I want people to develop their sense to be able to enjoy your world much mm. much more. Okay, mm. because that there's um, you know Helen Keller. He's, she's a write, a, a blind writer, a, a American writer. She's blind. She's deaf. She said in her books that the the best. And the most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. It must be felt with the heart. Mm -hmm. And I found that people who had a sensitive heart and sensitive sense, their their life are much more enriched, and you know they mm -hmm. can see much more, hear much more, mm -hmm. understand much more. Mm -hmm. But having said that, there's price to pay 
if you are sensitive to a lot of things in the world, you feel the pain more. You, 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 when things happen uh, you know, uh, badly, you feel it much, much more than people who doesn't give a damn, right? Yeah. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a price to pay for that. I was going to ask you. But it's worth do, it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's worth it. Do you sometimes get discouraged or uh, sad to see like, things getting worse? And of course, I think uh, part of it gets better, but maybe not fast enough. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, like the whole picture is like getting worse, basically. That's how do you feel? And how, how do you, how do you Cope, keep going right? on? Yeah, a lot of times I really want to feel, oh, it's enough. It's not enough, right? You've been, you just want to enjoy your life, right? You don't have to care about all these things, right? You can watch t uh, Netflix, you can, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, it's, it's none of your problem, really. Um, you know, it will, climate change, okay, you're going to die before the catastrophe happens. But mm, I have a child. Okay, uh, what kind of um, earth I'm going to live for? I mean, left for, for her, and um, you know, I think I. Although the problem is maybe as big as a mountain, but in if in this whole life you can take out just one, you know, piece of it, you know, it's it's worth worth doing it. It's I feel that it's a no nope, changing, um, um, you know, the world is not. You know, people like Mahatma Gandhi or Buddhas, he, even people like that, you know, they can't change, really change the world. It's just these little uh, people you know, like us, like me, who collectively, you know, we're trying to change the world together. And I think I still believe I'm too optimistic. People said, um, Lok Sua, you can say that, or, you know, beautiful, you know, people who had too optimistic view of the world. But it's because the world is beautiful. Why, why would we... You know, we would, uh, that's a vision that we want to see. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not about being beautiful, actually. It's about sustainable uh, life, sustainable life for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a beautiful pictures in the calendar or anything. So it's about survival, actually, for humanities. Mm -hmm. So I would have, you can't give up hope. And if I, I feel that if I become selfish, uh, you know, just live it, I can't see myself in the mirror. I say, what am I doing? You know, if I, I think I'm, I have a good opportunity. Um, you know, I have in certain um, place in society that I can contribute somehow. So why not I do little things? Like people complain about traffic, pollution, right? But you know, you do your part, right? Um, I, anyway, I like I I I I bicycle to work every day. But you might, might say I'm in Chiang Mai, so it's it's possible. But uh, it's it's part of it. It's for the better good. You you don't benefit right away, but you know when when the society become better, you 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 gain a lot from it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I but, like what you said before that if you see uh, how important it is and you feel the connection to it, of course you want to take care of it. You want to protect it mm -hmm. and. And and you want to be with it and and have it uh, in the best condition uh, for as long as it can 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 last. Mm. Yeah, I really like it too. Yeah, this this pain actually there's a word for it. Okay, that's called a solastogia. 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 This is a very fancy word that I learned recently. It's actually words that coin up because um, people who care about nature suffer from this uh, illness. Ah. So last year is the pain, anxiety, or depression caused by seeing the environment or the ecosystem become devastated, become you know destroyed. It's a, ki a kind of special kind of pain, mm. and sometimes quite intolerable. Place that you go in the, when you were young, um, like there's a beach in Cha'am where I grew up. Uh, the place I have a house there. Become there's no more there. It's become mm. you know it's become polluted and mm. high rise condo everywhere. Mm. It's unlike when we was when I was young. Yeah. Um, the forest that I used to go bird watchings when I was very young, they're gone. Become flooded with dams or, uh, or you know places. All the special place or uh, lotus pond behind my house now mm. become, uh, you know, um, it's. We understand why it happens, but it's also because we mm. if we love something so much. Yeah, you 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 care for them so much, right. you can't escape this pain. Mm -hmm. But you have to, um, you know, 
be positive all the time and see yeah. that uh, otherwise you wouldn't survive. <laughs> yeah. It's a horrible kind of pain, but maybe we need this kind of pain because if more people experience this kind of pain, it means you know more people care. Yep. And if we care more, something good is bound to happen. I'm sure. Yeah. But I, I still believe that it's a worthwhile kind of pain. I would rather have this pain than being a party. Being not caring about or don't see any beauty or mm. anything in the world, I, I wouldn't choose that. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't choose that. You know what? I I never imagined talking to a doctor could be so much fun, yeah, and you. it's all because of you. And I also like get two for the price of one. I mean, yeah, you're a doctor and you're also a naturalist, mm. and we have a great talk. So I I want to end this conversation. Sadly, I don't want it to end actually, but. What do you think about zoos? Oh, zoo! Because mainly you like observe birds or um, animals in nature, right? In mm -hmm. in their natural habitat. But zoos exist, and it's for a good reason. We have to give them that. But what what do we actually think about zoos? Well, personally, mm. I dislike zoo. I don't like zoo. Um, it make me depressed seeing animal in captivity. Um, like you, you, if uh, a beautiful stars, you know, they in prison, you visit them in, in jail, mm. they wouldn't look happy or you know at all. And they, you, you look at the tigers. At when you were young, you see the tigers in zoo the first time, you are excited, right? Mm. Oh, tigers, elephants, uh, but you wouldn't want to see them again. You know, walking back and forth, uh, obsessive, compulsive like that. And, you know, back and forth because of their boredom or become you know psychic. Problem, it's it's a sad thing to see like cholera in in the cap in a glass um, cage and up in a department store. It doesn't bring happiness at all, mm -hmm. not to us, not to the animals. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Sue has um, a role to play play if it's a proper one. I mean, and it's you know, kids want to see animals, and um, I think that's it's a lot of for a lot of people that their first step. A door to connect them with natural world, mm -hmm. but we need to make them uh, see that. When I'll tell you, when my mother bring me to the zoo, what she said to me, she said, "These animals sacrifice themselves for their kind, for us to understand them. But it's uh, you know they they we we should not treat them like that. Mm -hmm. But you know we you know they sacrifice <laughs> themselves to be mm -hmm. you know for you know as a sample model for that." So, but um, the modern zoo, the modern zoo, all, they, they had a bigger exhibit, you know, more natural the exhibit. And also they are more um, concentrated on conservation. Mm. But it's that so-called ex situ conservation, means that they're not doing in the natural habitats. Um, some of animals that so rare, few of them left, they might need to breed in captivities uh. and have this plan of reintroduction put them back into nature. And we have several success in mm. Thailand, like, you know, Sarah's crane, the crane, oh. the big, huge bird that we had, in, uh, we can, it was extinct in Thailand for many years. Now we have them back mm. in Burudam, thanks to the surgical um, organization um, uh, that they, they breed the birds and they go back. Mm. But it's a very special program and it costs a lot to bring back certain animal back. Mm. It is much cheaper and much more effective to conserve them in the natural habitat. And by protecting habitat, you're not only protecting that animal species, you're protecting everything. Mm -hmm. So it's much, much, you know, um, you know much, much a better way to do it, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you're having um, uh, animals in captivity. It does maybe look like tigers or animal, but it, it, the, it doesn't act like one. It doesn't uh, have value like one. It, mm. it, a, it doesn't, you know, service like one, right? Mm. And so it, the value of it is be, just become um, a model, not, you know, s uh, mm -hmm. animal that should serve in the, in the ecosystem. Yeah. So I think so need to, um, they have a certain uh, uh, role to play in the society. But myself, I I feel depressed every time I visit them. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of fun, and I mm. learn a lot from you. So thank you so much for coming to right the show. Then. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so for much. Yeah, bye.